Hi folks, it's Mr. Ackerman here. Uh, in this video, what we're going to do is look at how to edit a photo where the regular editing tools don't quite get you to where you want to be, but you know there's more information in the photo, you know there's more detail that you can bring out, and so what you want to do is what some people refer to as local corrections, just correcting or editing certain parts of the photo, not the whole thing. What we've been doing up until now are called, uh, or what I would call, global corrections or corrections that hit the entire photo. I'll explain what I mean. I'm in Adobe Camera Raw with a photo that I took in Ireland at a lake called Dula. It's uh, a lake that's kind of in a valley formed by these mountains on either side. And as you can see in the photo, it's uh, kind of a gray day, which is not a surprise in Ireland. A storm is coming in, it's getting windy, there's some interesting waves here coming in toward the shore. There's a couple rocks in the foreground and then you've got your, your mountains and sky in the background. So I remember it being a lot more colorful when I was there, and I also remember there being more contrast. This is a fairly you know, dull kind of image. So let's go and do what we normally do. We might start with exposure and kind of play with that and see where we want it to go. Uh, one thing you'll notice right away, if I bring down the exposure, you start to see there's actually blue in the sky here. But when the sky gets to the way I want, the rest of the photo is too dark. So I don't want it down there. For the rest of the photo, I might want the brightness to be here, but now I lose the detail in the sky. So this is why I'm going to need to do a local adjustment to the sky or somewhere else at some point. So I'm going to set this to approximately the right brightness that I want and just leave it. Okay? Uh, contrast, you know I generally add about 15 or 20 points just off the bat. Let's try highlights. If I bring them down, the sky starts to recover, but not enough, and I also start to lose a little bit of uh, the brightness in the waves. But I think I'm happy with it down here, so I'm going to leave it there. Shadows, if I bring them up, I see more detail in the mountains, but I also start to wash out the photo. If I bring it down, things get too dark, I lose detail. So maybe I'll just go up a little bit. I don't want this to wash out too much. The whites are going to help with those, uh, those waves. So I'll bring those up, but now I lose detail in the sky, so I really don't know what to do here. Maybe I'll just kind of leave it around zero. And the blacks, if I bring them down, I get nice rich shadow tones, but I darken things up a bit too much. And if I bring it up here, I see detail in the shadows, but I wash out again. So where should I go? I think I'm going to go for rich tones, so down a little bit. Clarity, up we go for more detail and contrast, down for a dreamier sort of look. Landscapes I like to be more detailed and a little bit sharper, so I generally add a bit of clarity. Dehaze is uh, similar to clarity, but it's easy to overdo it. One thing I like about going up on the dehaze is the sky is starting to come back, but now you notice the mountains are getting darker again. So I might raise the shadows a bit. Not totally happy with that. Up on the whites for, for these waves. And uh, vibrance, there isn't too much color in here. But you can see if I go to the right, the greens and the little bit of blue that we have in the sky gets a little more concentrated, so that's good. I'm going to leave it here for now, and I'm just going to hit the preview button. Here's where we started, and here's where we are now. It's definitely, I think, an improved photo, but we could do better. Like, there's definitely more color to bring out in the sky, and this is where I'm going to start. So you're going to go up to the top here, and you're going to select the adjustment brush. The shortcut is just to hit the letter K. When you do that, a new screen pops up here where you can adjust all of these different things. And if they aren't set to zero, just go in here and click and go reset local correction settings. But that's already been done. If you scroll down, you'll see that there's the size. Now that is the size of the brush you're going to use for painting. So you can move it to the right, it gets bigger. You move it to the left and it gets smaller. A shortcut for this is the square brackets to the right of the letter P on your keyboard. Square bracket like this or that way, left and right square brackets is a much faster way to do this. The dashed line around the outer edge is the feathering region. It's showing you just uh, how soft the brush is going to be. If you bring that down, you have less feathering. That's kind of where the effect kind of gradually peters out. And you can also adjust the flow which is every time you click the mouse, how much of the effect comes out. It's almost like a spray paint can at 100% or less for a bit more control. 
Anyway, let's uh, put it around, I don't know, maybe 75-ish is good enough. Uh, now, if you want to paint in there, select a brush size that's going to get the job done. I just want to get the, the sky here. And I'm going to get the feathering down really low so I can get these edges. And if you click Mask, and if you select a color other than white, watch what happens. When you paint in here, you see where the effect is coming in. Now, don't worry, I'm not painting pink onto the photo. This is just called the mask, and it lets me see exactly where the effect that I'm trying to create is going in. And so I'm going to get in there like that. I might have to change the brush size. Oh, you see I spilled over into the mountains there. So what I can do here is zoom in using this. Always a good idea to zoom in. Or Control or Command Plus brings me in there. And then scroll over. Let's see. Yeah, I can definitely do a better job here. But it seems no matter what I am do, I'm going to get a little bit of spillover. Now, if I slip, whoops, and make a mistake, I can go to Erase. And now I have an erase brush, which I can adjust the feathering and get rid of that mistake I just made. Square brackets to get smaller. There we go. Much better. Now back to add, because I'm adding to the existing mask. I'm just going to try to get in there. I don't want this video to go any longer than it has to, so I'm not going to do the most careful job possible, but I'm going to show you some of the things I'm trying to do and some of the ways that you can improve on your own later on. So just a little tap there and a little click and drag over here. Uh, oh, I need a little bit of erase there. And uh, in a minute we're going to have a look at this. So Command or Control 0 to fit back into the field of view. Turn off the mask. And now with this pin activated, whatever I do up here is going to affect the area I painted. Like if I darken this, all the way down. It looks terrible. And you can see the parts where I missed. So I can add that. Whoops, sorry, I'm erasing here. I can add that back in like that to make sure I didn't miss anything. And I can also control plus get right in there and see these little areas where maybe a smaller brush size would do a good job. But it seems no matter what, I'm always kind of missing or going a little bit too far. So here's a suggestion here. If you take your brush size and you make it bigger, and you also increase the feathering by a lot, and then just kind of paint over using, see what's happening there? I'm just painting and letting the feathering hit those areas, and then get a little bit smaller. You'll start to gradually fill in those, those weird edges, and that way your selection, which is kind of what we're doing here, we're selecting an area, look a little bit more natural. So let's go back and let's up that exposure. Here's where it started at zero. And now you see when I bring it down a bit, you don't have that glowing edge so much. A little bit of it up there, which I can try to fix. That's looking a bit better. Don't go too far or you'll have this. Uh, Control or Command Z to go back a step. Anyway, you can fix this kind of stuff up on your own. I don't want to make the video longer than it has to be. But let's pretend that I like the way it looks here. I can always click the Before and After Preview button to see if I'm happy. Uh, here's another thing I'd like to do. I'm going to go for a new brush. You see this pin is no longer active, so new brush. And I'm going to reset the local settings. Oops. And this time, I think what I want to do is brighten up these breaking waves to make them a little more dramatic. So turn on the mask again. Select a brush size that will cover your area along with feathering. And let's put a little bit of that into there. And what I'm going to do in a moment is I'm going to maybe up the exposure a little bit and also uh, maybe try to use clarity or highlights or whites to kind of bring out that energetic aspect of those waves. So turn off the mask and uh, let's see what I can do. Should I up the exposure? Not too far. It looks ridiculous. But maybe just a bit. Uh, how about highlights? That's a more subtle effect, maybe a little bit. How about the whites? If I bring those up, sorry about the loud announcement that's coming through in the background. That'll, that's because I'm recording this at lunch and there's a lot going on in the school. But there we go. And uh, let's now look before and after. So before, after. It's getting a lot more dramatic. Uh, one last thing that I'll show you that you might do. You might paint over 
the mountains, and this would be a tougher job because things get narrow down here. You'll be changing your brush size a lot. You might paint on just the rocks, brighten them up and bring out some detail. You might darken these areas through here. Whatever you choose to do, you can make the photo look however you want. If we go back to targeted adjustment, which is letter T over here and gets you back to the main screen, watch this. If I push this button before and after, I see the entire image before and after. And I think you'll agree with me, it's getting more dramatic and more interesting. So I hope you uh, have learned something here and you can apply this to your other photos. I'm going to give you this photo to play with in the G-Class assignment. And after that, the assignment will be to continue doing this to other photos of your own. All right, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye now.